hey, I need about two or three ushers, and if you're not an usher, go ahead and volunteer to be one, okay? Uh, I need two or three men to help Scott. Uh, if you're a man and you feel led to help Scott, that'd be good. I want every family to get the God Bless America magazine, so we're going to hand it out to you. So if you will uh, just go ahead, guys, and go around to every family and make sure every family gets one of these. God Bless America magazine. We want you to have one. And uh, just don't read it right now. You can read it when you get home. It's a real blessing. It's a help. It's put out by Brother Byron Fox. And you'll enjoy it. You'll read it later. You won't like it if you read it now, all right? You'll enjoy it if you read it later. Uh, so take you one home and read it, okay? All right? Okay, good. If you're a family and you didn't get one, uh, if you're a family and you didn't get one, raise your hand. We want you to have one. We want everybody to have one. What now? Miss Usher needs one. Did y'all got some left? You just run out. Scott, right there where Miss Usher sits. And Scott, come up here. All right. Is she in here? All right. When Miss Tina gets back, did anybody? Now, we may not have one uh, for the children. We may not have one for children. We, uh, we may have one just for every family. Scott, Miss Betty Connor wants one. Okay, good. All right, good. Uh, Scott, when Miss Tina comes back in here, you can hand her one. Did we know, it, did she get lost? <laughs> I, know, I know we got some kids in the nursery, all right? Okay, all right. Let's get our hymn books. And Brother Jess will come. And let's all sing, amen? Let's sing tonight. Right. Get your hymn book, turn to page 157, I'll fly away, page 157, I'll fly away. We'll sing verses 1 and 3, uh, page 157, I'll fly away, verses 1 and 3, page 157. Everybody stand up and sing out. Some glad prayer needs tonight, uh, and I'm not sure I can remember everything, but I'm going to try to give you what I can. Uh, I know that Miss Nancy Pollard, Nancy says she's not feeling well. We need to keep her in our prayers. Now, she's here. I believe she's in the nursery, but she's just not done well. Uh, Mr. Bill Betts was here for Sunday school, but then had to go home sick. So let's pray for Bill Betts. Please keep in your prayers Curtis Connor. Curtis is not feeling well. Uh, please pray for all those in the nursing homes, and especially remember to lift up Kevin Gentry in prayer. Please pray for little Zay Johnson, uh, the little fellow who has uh, cancer. He's Brittany Terrell's nephew. He is having surgery this Friday. Remember Zay Johnson in prayer. Pray for uh, David and Paxton Madison's grandmother, uh, 
Linda Howard, David and Paxton ride the Winfield bus and they come with us on Wednesday nights to church. Pray for her. Her name is Linda Howard. She has a very serious disease. Uh, pray for a friend of Miss Debbie Stimmett, Stimmett, Laura Emmerlein. She's had both lungs transplanted. Pray that her body will not reject the two lungs. Uh, pray for a family, and I believe this family may be in Hamilton. The Holcomb family had a, a two-year-old uh, that drowned in Florida, and, the, and I think this funeral is going to be here, from what I understand. Pray also uh, for those that have cancer. Please lift up Roger Davis to the Lord. Please pray for Huli Riggs, Tony Dobbs. Tony is changing from a chemo to Ketruda. So please pray for Tony Dobbs. Please remember Brother and Mrs. Bozeman and their help. Please remember my parents and their help. Uh, please pray for Jason Connor and uh, those that are deployed in the National Guard. And I know we have other requests. Uh, please uh, remember these others. And if you have an unspoken request, would you raise your hand if you have unspoken? Let's remember, remember these unspoken requests. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Okay, let's pray. And I, when we pray, I encourage all of us to pray. Please, let's all pray. Let's lift up our prayers to the Lord, okay? Lord, we come to you for these sick and these ill folks that are just not well. We also come to you for sin, sickness. And Lord, we know we live in a sin-cursed world. We ask you, dear Lord, to please uh, help those that are, that are bound by physical problems and those that are, are bound by... Uh, sin problems. Lord, I pray for deliverance. God, we pray for those that were not able to be here this morning, some out of town, some had other sickness and illness. And God, we just ask you to bless our Sunday school classes. Please bless our bus routes. God, be with those that uh, came during the revival. Help us to be a, a help to them, encouraging them to be faithful to God and faithful to church. And Lord, if there's those that need salvation, please God, help us to, to give them our testimony of how God saved us. Lord, bless us as we go forward with this contest between the men and the ladies, the boys and the girls. And God, help us to do our best this week in, in contacting new people and giving the gospel out. And uh, Lord, we certainly need your anointing and your blessing. We need your strength and we need your help, dear God. You're a great God. And we thank you for how that you are a God that takes care of everything in the universe. You keep it all together. And Lord, you're also one who's a friend to us individually, who can share with us and give us exactly what we need. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing and your help. And we pray you would enter into this service and help us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Our choir is going to sing.
if you didn't get a church bulletin, lift your hand. We'll get one to you, uh, unless your name is Inslee. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. We can get her one. If y'all got one, you can get her one. Uh, Scott, you can bring her one. All right. Uh, please remember to pray for our tithes and offerings. Pray and obey. There ought to be many people getting in to our home discipleship study. If you're not in, I encourage you to get in. And uh, it can, i tell you what, I believe this. I believe if you got in the home discipleship study, you could take one night a week and spend about 30 minutes a night on it, 30 to 40 minutes a night, one night a week, and you would do really well. What do you think about that, Miss Walker? She's been through all three. One night a week, about 30 to 40 minutes a week, you'd learn a lot. You'd get a lot done. So if you're not involved, Get involved, it'll be a blessing and a help to you. Hey, we had 128 new contacts last week. That was great, and let's do it again this week. Uh, I'll tell you in a moment who won the contest today between the guys and the gals, uh, but you, the way you get points is make new contacts, give out some kind of information about the church, a track or something, or an invite. You can even make a new invite to somebody. Hey, I see somebody at the gas station, see somebody at Walmart, Hand them a track, okay? Go through the plan of salvation. And you don't have to go through the plan of salvation for 30 minutes. Uh, just go through the simple plan of salvation with somebody. Encourage them to read the track. And just go through the points and tell them they need the Lord. They need to be saved if they're not saved. That's five points. And then ten points for bringing a visitor. A visitor is anybody who doesn't normally come. Okay, so that's a wide, wide scope there. We will have a very special service next Sunday night, a vision service. It's going to be a great service. We'll come here. We'll do what we normally do, announcements and birthdays, and then we'll have a very short message. We'll go over, and we'll do what everybody loves to do. We'll eat. Amen? And then I'm going to give you some handouts about vision, and uh, I'll have you hand some of those back to me, and I'll let you keep some of it, okay? But we need a vision. Where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. Perish. So let's pray. God will give us a vision. Uh, I'm, I'm changing this. I told you this morning. I'm going to meet tonight. If you are a teacher in our school or if you're a teacher in our Sunday school, I want to meet with you in the ladies' prayer room, a teacher in our school or a teacher in our Sunday school. Uh, we will be having a school program this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. If you can help us with the food pantry, please do that. And if you want to find out who won between the guys and the gals, let me know. Do you or you don't care? Yeah, you don't really yeah. you don't care? Yeah. I will tell you this. The guys did very good. But the girls squeaked by a victory. So give the gals a hand, all right? They squeaked by a victory. But guys, we did pretty good. But I will tell you this, guys, if we're going to beat them next week, we got to do a little better, all right? So we got to do a little bit better next week. So let's, let's work hard. Let's make more contacts. Let's do more. And the gals won week one, and we'll, we'll have some way to indicate that later. But, uh, but uh, I think the guys are coming on. I, I see a surge in the second quarter. Amen? I believe we can do it. So let's do our best, guys, all right? Uh, let's sing some more. Turn to page uh, 468, 468, Joy Unspeakable. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. Page 468, Joy Unspeakable, uh, verses 1 and 4. Page 468, everybody stand up and sing. I am found His grace is all complete. Peace of mind.
service is over tonight, uh, Bradley Dole and Neil Buck and Anthony Cox and who's our other one? Scott Gentry are going to help Brother Han. And any of you other men that want to come up here, we've got to clear this platform for the program, the school program. So if you can help grab something, Brother Han will show you where it needs to go. I'm going to be meeting with some people. And uh, let's pray. Ask God to bless our offering, bless our church, and take care of our needs. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Lord, we, we ask you to please take care of our the church's financial needs. And God, give us people who will love the Lord, love our church, love souls. And God, we need folks who will be a part of the ministry, who will pull together, who will care. And God, give us folks who care and love. And Lord, we pray you meet the needs, and God, help us to do right. By helping our missionaries, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Page 393, Blessed Assurance. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. Page 393, yeah, the verse there is from Hebrews uh, 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Page 393, Blessed Assurance, verses 1 and 3. Everybody stand up and sing from the heart. All right, page 393. <laughs> Go around, shake your base hands.
All right, I got something I want y'all to do. All right, can everybody stand back up? Everybody stand up. These wonderful, sweet, y'all come on, go and do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, y'all going to lead the way. These Get on up here, get up here. These wonderful and sweet young people moved up for me a little closer. And I told them if they did that some folks in the church might get up a little closer. So I'm going to let you do whatever you feel like you need to do. But these young people moved a little closer up so I could preach to them. So if you feel led to move a little closer up, you can. If you feel like you're where you need to be, you stay where you need to be. But these young people set a good example, all right? Uh, thank you, Donna, for moving up. I knew you were going to. You're going to move up here a little closer, I know. All right, good. Amen. Thank you. All right, and if you're not going to move, just have a seat. Just plop down where you are, all right? But uh, I appreciate those of you who want to get a little closer. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good. Well, we have a birthday. A very famous person has a birthday this week. His name is on, it's so familiar. It just rolls off our tongue. His name is Neil Buck. All right. <laughs> Y'all give Neil a big hand, amen? Yeah. He's going to be 153 this week, all right? <laughs> all right. Uh, anybody, anybody else have a birthday this week? Anybody else? Yes. What day? Thursday? Neil, yours is what? Neil's is Wednesday and David's is Thursday, okay? Anybody else have a birthday this week? Anybody else have a birthday this week? Well, Mr. Neil Buck is here, and let's all sing to Neil, happy birthday. But I want to tell you something. Neil loves our church. He's faithful. Uh, he works here. He cuts grass. He sings in the choir. He's an usher. Uh, he's just a good guy. Amen. And he even goes out visiting with a preacher. Amen. That's real good. Amen. Let's sing to Brother Neil. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Amen. All right, ladies are going to come and sing for us. Sinner saved by grace. 
just a sinner, a sinner, saved by grace, by grace. When I stood condemned to death, he took my place, my place. Now I grow and breathe in freedom with each breath. Probably about uh, 15 to 20 ladies turn in forms. We probably had 10 to 15 guys turn in forms. So what we need to do, by the way, you can go ahead and be turned to 1 John. What we need to do, 1 John, is everybody needs to do something. Everybody needs to do something. You know, if everybody would just decide, you know, I'm going to do something. I'm going to, I'm going to at least give out a track to somebody. I'm going to do something. If we'd all do something, we'd make a difference, amen? So I encourage you, everybody this week, guy or gal, let's all do something. Turn your Bibles to 1 John. 1 John. 1 John. We must have a crew in the nursery tonight. <laughs> got a, folks leaving to go to the nursery. All right, amen. 1 John. And we're going to look at chapter 1 in just a moment. If you have something right with, I was noticing in Sunday school today, uh, Miss Brenda Weston was taking notes, and I guess she does know, and that's good. And this is, this is going to be one of those messages that I really encourage you to take down a few notes because it's going to be a simple message, but it's nothing I've ever preached. This is brand new. I, God gave this to me this week. Um, and it's a, it's a simple thought, but it's, I think, profound. I think there's going to be some things I give you that are pretty profound, simple but profound, and I think it'll help you. Uh, I am going to preach tonight on how to stay close to God after you get saved. We can drift away, amen? We can go away from God and not be where we ought to be with God. And I want to try to give you some thoughts tonight on how to stay close to God after you get saved. And I'm going to try to stick with the Bible, but I believe this will be a blessing. It will be a help to you uh, tonight. And I want to pray before I get started. You pray for me. Pray for God to help me. Now, Lord, I pray you'd help us tonight. It's a simple thought. It's not a profound message that will be put down in some history book or something. Uh, probably none of mine will be, but Lord, we, we just ask you to please help us tonight. I believe there will be some really profound truths given tonight and a really big help to all of us if we'll listen. And uh, some of these thoughts will be good to remember, It'll be a help to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sin is the enemy of the Christian life. Don't ever forget that. Sin is the enemy of the Christian life. Do you recall in reading your Bible that whenever Adam and Eve sinned, something happened after, after Adam and Eve sinned? God said, you can no longer be in my garden. He drove them out. He said, you can't be in this perfect place that I've created for you. You've violated that. You've sinned. The Bible said even an angel was put there to guard the way for them not to re-enter the Garden of Eden. Now that's a symbolic thing. Don't forget that. Don't forget that symbolic truth when God said, No, Adam and Eve, you can't be here. 
You've sinned. You've done the one thing. And Brother Wattenberg about killed himself on that. I think I did tonight. But one thing that I told you you couldn't do. And that's to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you did it. You've sinned. You've got to go. Now go, fast forward to the New Testament. Do you remember, remember the day Jesus died on the cross? Do you remember in that great, wonderful temple, that veil of the temple was torn? Now, sin had been paid for. The sin debt of all mankind had been paid for. And God symbolically tore that veil that separated people into God's presence, saying now you can enter into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have access. And so that presence of God. I'm going to make a couple statements. We're going to read 1 John, and I'll give you some things tonight. The closeness of your relationship to God is a good barometer of how much you desire to do something for God. I hear that again. The closeness of your relationship to God is a good barometer of how much you desire that you want to do something for God. I was praying with somebody just recently. I was praying with them, and this was their prayer. They said, I just want to do more for God. You know what that means to me? It means to me they're getting close to God. Amen. I'm going to give you another statement. The closeness of your relationship with God is also a wonderful protection against sin coming into your life. The closer, and you know why? Go to 1 John, I'll show you. 1 John, there's a verse right there in 1 John chapter 1. Look at verse 5. The very last phrase in verse 5. God is light, and in Him is no what? darkness at all. If you are close to God, you desire to be close to God, you do not want sin to be in your life because God knows that. God senses that sin. You sense that God knows that sin. So let me give you some thoughts tonight. I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I may preach a little on some of them, but I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six. The message is how to stay close to God after you're saved. Number one, Deal with personal sin in your life. Confess it and forsake it. Let's read 1 John. Deal with personal sin in your life. Confess it and forsake it. When the Spirit of God deals with you about something, you ought to admit it to God. That's what the word confess means. Lord, as a matter of fact, I'll give you, uh, for, look at 1 John 1, 9. You got 1 John 1, 9, that verse we all love. If we confess our sins. Now, y'all read it with me, verse 9. Everybody read it with me. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Look at the word confess. Now I'm going to give you the Greek word there and you're going to say, preacher, I don't know Greek. Well, I'm going to give it to you and then tell you what it means. The Greek word is homologos. What in the world is that? It's two words that mean say the word logos means word. We went to a logos Baptist church in the Philippines. I preached there on a Sunday morning. Logos Baptist Church means the word Baptist Church is what it means. Homo Logos means the same word. You know what that means? It means this. Say the same thing about your sin that God does. God hates it. God despises it. And so when we get to a point where we despise our sin, our sin of gossip, our sin of lying, our sin of cheating, our sin of robbing God, our sin of not witnessing, our sin of not praying, our sin of not being faithful, 
When we start saying the same thing about our sin that God does, that's when we're ready to get right with God. Amen? Now, here's the thing. Number one, deal with personal sin, confess it, and forsake it. Let's read 1 John. Start with verse number 4. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. You know Christians who have joy are Christians who deal with their sin. This then is the message which we've heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness or sin, we lie and do not the truth. Preacher, I love God. Boy, I go out knocking on doors, talking to people all the time. I love God. I look around their house, I see a lot of signs of things that are not loving God. Well, I really love the Lord, preacher. I just don't go to church. I don't serve God. I don't do anything right. That's not what God says. God says, if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If you're sitting here tonight and you're sitting there and saying, well, Brother Maddox, I just don't know anything I could confess, then you're telling a bald-faced lie, all right? Because I know a bunch of things I can confess, amen? And I'm not any better than you, but I know I'm one of you, amen? I is one of you, so I know you're lying. All right, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse number 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So how can I stay close to God after I'm saved? Number one, say it with me. Hey, all, did any of y'all write it down? Did anybody write it down? Deal with what? Personal sin, confess it and forsake it. Personal sin in your life. Yes, that's right. Confess it and forsake it. Amen? That's what David did when he sinned. Now, he just waited a year to do it. But ask God to put the spotlight on it. Number two, turn to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. How many of you love the Psalms? Amen? Psalm 1. How to stay close to God after you're saved. Deal with sin, confess it, forsake it. Number two, stay around people who love God. Amen? Thank you, Brother Jeff. Amen. Anybody else agree with that? Stay around people who love God. Amen? Stay around people who love God. Let's read Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delights in the law of the Lord. His law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Look up there where it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You don't want to have the advice of ungodly people. Nor stand, you're not in the way of people who live sinful lives. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. People who mock the Bible, mock God, and mock righteousness is not the crowd to be around. If you want to be around that crowd, it won't be long before you are that crowd. Proverbs 13 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be what? Why? Say it with me. Shall be what? Wise. wise. But a companion of fools shall be what? Destroyed. Let's say it together. He that walketh with wise men shall be what? Wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Amnon had a friend. You remember that? Jonadab. That agged him on, said, well, go ahead. I'll help you plan it out. And this girl that you really like, uh, you can get along with her. And girls, don't let that happen. Don't let a boy be alone with you. Amen. Jonadab said, hey, Amnon, I can help you plan it out. 
and he raped his half-sister, and it was terrible from there on. It was awful because he had the wrong friends. Hey, look, you say, preacher, what do I do? I got friends that I love, and I don't need to hang around them. I tell you what, dude, do what I did. When I got right with God, I went to all my friends, and I said, look, I know how you live. I can't hang around you anymore, but I tell you what I'll do. You can come sit with me in church. Somebody say amen to that, amen. I said, you can come sit with me in church. This was when I was a senior in high school, and I had one or two take me up on it. Yeah, I'll do that. But I told them I couldn't hang around with them anymore because I knew how they lived. Number two, stay around people who love God. 1 Corinthians says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That good manners there means good morals. So number one, how do I stay close to God after I get saved? Deal with sin, personal sin. Please deal with it fast. Confess it. Forsake it. Stay around people who love God. Who love God. Number three, I love this one. This is a good one. And you may be okay on those first two. You may say, well, I'm good good on number one, I'm good on number two. How about number three? Talk to the Lord all of the time. Talk to the Lord all of the time. We sang a wonderful song tonight in the choir. What a friend we have, say it, in Jesus. But let me ask you, is he really your friend? Y'all ever heard of the evangelist Billy Sunday? The more I study about Billy Sunday, the more I'm intrigued by him. I believe it's Isaiah 60 or 61, the Spirit of the Lord God's upon me. I never saw anywhere Billy Sunday preach a message about the filling of the Holy Spirit. But every time he preached, no matter what he preached on, he put his finger on that verse, the Spirit of the Lord God's upon me. And the entire time he preached, he would either have his left finger on it or his right finger on it or run by and touch it. And they say that every Bible that Billy Sunday owned, it wore out right there on that verse because he had his finger on it because he wanted God's blessing and God's power on him. Wow! Billy Sunday. You know what they say about Billy Sunday? His wife's name, everybody affectionately called her Ma Sunday. Billy Sunday died, I believe, in 1935. If that's right, it's close to there, somewhere in there, right? 1935. Powerful preacher. But Ma Sunday lived another 20 years. When Dr. Jack Hiles, I know some of y'all remember Dr. Jack Hiles, when he was pastoring in Texas, Before he went to Indiana, he had a Sunday, a special Sunday in his church called Ma Sunday. That's what he called it, Ma Sunday. And he had her come to his church in Texas and had her give her testimony and teach a little Sunday school lesson. He he didn't ask her to preach, but he said, give your testimony about your life with Billy and all that you went through with him and and, uh, had a big day and all. But here's what they say about Ma Sunday, what she said about her husband, Billy. She said they'd be in their house when he was not on the road preaching or whatever. And she'd be in the living room and he'd be in the den. Or he'd want to be in the bedroom and, 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 and she'd say, Billy, what'd you say? Because she heard him talking in the next room. What'd you say, Billy? And he'd say, Ma, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the Lord. Okay. You listen to me. My wife prays all the time. I mean, literally, she prays all the time. There are times, see, she's more spiritual. See, she's the Billy Sunday in our family, amen? But I pray too. But there are times I hear her and I want, is she talking to me? No, no, she's talking to the Lord. You know what? You'll stay close to God if you'll talk to him all the time. I mean all the time. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray 
without ceasing. The Bible says he spake a parable of them that, that men are always to pray and not to faint. When Jacob wanted to get right with God, what happened? He had an all-night prayer meeting. Talked to God all the time. I heard somebody say this recently. And I'm not sure. I want, I want to tell you what I heard somebody say. I want to see what you think about it. I heard somebody say recently about their church that they thought probably most of the people in their church never really got along and had much time with God. I hope and pray that's not true of us. I hope you have time with God. And I will tell you, you don't need to just have that one time where you get along. You need to talk to the Lord all day long. Talk to Him. Pray. Give your heart to Him. Let God know you love Him. Amen? If the Lord looks down from heaven, He ought to be able to say... Well, I know she loves me. She talks to me all the time. Or well, I know he loves me. He talks to me all the time. You'll stay close to God. Amen. What if we had a church full of young people and adults and senior citizens that decided we're just going to talk to God all the time. We're going to believe God. I believe it make a change. Amen. Number four, how to stay close to God after you get saved. Number four, it's a simple one. I got two more to give you after this. I, won't, I don't know if I'll spend a whole lot of time on this. Number four, follow His commands. Follow His commands. Get you a Bible. By the way, that's a wonderful thing to do. Get you a Bible. Start reading your Bible. If you do nothing more then read a few verses every day and get alone and say, God, show me. Hey, let me ask you to do something. Can everybody do this right now? If you have a Bible, turn to Psalm 1. Psalm 1, just turn to Psalm 1. If you've got a Bible, and by the way, please, I'm going to encourage you, bring your Bibles to church. Bring them to church. All right, I'm going to ask you all some questions. And I want a lady to answer this one. A lady that's sitting toward the back. Any of you ladies are sitting toward the back. How many verses are in Psalm 1? Lady in the back, tell me. Six, good. You think you could read six verses tomorrow morning? That would be more than some of you read this morning. Read them. Reread them. And ask God to speak. All right, let's have a young person up front. How many verses are in Psalm 2? Loud, honey. Twelve. There you go. The people in the back couldn't hear you. I want them to hear you too. Twelve. How many think you could read twelve verses in the morning? I do. All right, Psalm 3. Uh, let's have somebody in this section over here. Psalm 3. How many verses are in Psalm 3? Eight. You think you read eight verses in the morning? You know what? Here's the truth. You could read 6 from Psalm 1. You could read 12 from Psalm 2. And you could read 8 from Psalm 3. And it wouldn't kill you. And then you say, God, show me something special for me. And that's all that you need to do. Walk with God. Amen. And obey His commands. When I was a boy growing up, my parents taught me good things. But one of the things they taught me was responsibility. And the way they taught me responsibility is they gave me jobs to do. They gave me things to do. And when they checked on me, now when I was young and, you know, when I was six, seven, eight years old, you know, little toe-headed boy they were just teaching me then. But when I got up about 11, 12, 13, 14, buddy, 
David, they expected it to be done. Amen? Now, do you think God expects us to read His commands and obey them? He sure does. I wanted to be close to my parents and love them. I still do. I want to be close to my parents and love them. So, when they gave me commands, I wanted to do them. When God gives us commands, if you want to stay close to Him, you ought to do them. Amen? Do them. Walk with God. Love God. Do the things that God says to do. Man, be against. When you see sin in the Bible, you see sin. I'm not going to do that. Amen. I'm not going to do it. That's not right. It's not of God. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to have wrath in my life. Sodomy, fornication, evil thoughts, uh, Satanism, witchcraft. I'm just going to stay away from that stuff. Obey God. Do what He says to do. Don't do what He says not to do. Amen. Find a promise. Claim it. Number five, I love this. Take the Holy Spirit's advice. Take the Holy Spirit's advice. I'm going to see how smart y'all are. Is every situation in every circumstance you'll ever face in life any small situation about people, events, problems, interpersonal relationships, is every answer clearly spelled out in the Bible, yes or no? The answer is no. Not every answer is in the Bible. There are nuances of life that we got to have God's help with. Now here's the way God does it. He gives us the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now let me give you a for instance. Here's a good for instance. What do you do when you face something you've never faced before? And you don't know if the answer is in there or not. And it may not be. All right, watch it. In the Bible, the Bible says this. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So what do you do? You face something you've never faced before and you don't know if the answer is in there or not. You better pray. And then seek the leadership of the Holy Spirit because guess what? He lives inside of you. He may lead you to a verse that can give some light to it. It may not answer the question, but it may give light to it. But that verse in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Somebody on planet earth has faced what you're facing. Somebody, get this, has lived longer than you. That preacher was up here the other night, Brother Steve Nichols. He's in his 70s, the one that led me to Christ. He's lived longer than me. He's faced more than me. He's faced burying his wife. Whenever you have a situation you've never faced before, go to good, godly people who walk with God and let them guide you and let the Holy Spirit lead you to that person. Don't go to somebody who don't love God and, don't, and, and they're not serving God. You can find ten people that will tell you to do what you want to do and it will be wrong. Go to somebody you love somebody you respect, somebody you know walks with God. I have a list of about four or five preachers. Anytime in my life I need them, I can call them. They, they love me, they love God, and they may not have an answer, but they walk with God and they'll help me know the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Take the Holy Spirit's advice. He lives in you. He can give you leadership. He can give you guidance. Something happened to Miss Maddox and I this week. And we didn't think we ought to do a certain thing. And then two days later, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and to her the same day and showed us we had an opening to do what we felt like we needed to do. Now, is that a coincidence? Is that goofy? Or is that God? That's God. Amen? Follow the Holy Spirit's 
advice. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Have you ever seen a beautiful sail ship out in the ocean? Have those big, beautiful sails? They have them come into New York Harbor sometimes. Those big days, they, the big sail ships come in. You ever seen the wind fill those sails and guide those ships a certain way? The Holy Spirit can fill our life and direct us and guide us exactly where God wants us to go. If He lives inside of you, He can speak to you. I'm not being strange and spooky. God lives in you if you're saved. Amen? If you're saved, He lives in you. You know the Bible talks about quenching the Holy Spirit? The Bible talks about grieving the Holy Spirit? Okay, you're saying, don't answer this out loud because if you do, you're going to reveal how far away from God you are. Okay, so don't answer it out loud. Have you ever felt a leadership through the Bible and prayer that you ought to do a certain thing? And you said, no, I'm not going to do it. Let me give you one that you've all been through. The Lord just really spoke to you in a service. And said, you need to go forward and just pray about that. And you said, no. Now look up at me. You quenched the Holy Spirit. You poured water on the Spirit of God's flame that wanted to do something in your life. Grieving the Holy Spirit. You know how you grieve the Holy Spirit? He's God in you. Watching and listening a bunch of cussing on TV. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You listen to the preacher right now. There's no way under heaven we can sit and watch a bunch of sex and cussing and immorality all week long and then come to church and God bless our services. Somebody needs to say amen. Uh, we are grieving the Holy Spirit all week long and then we're asking Him to bless us. That won't work. Amen? We can't be grieving the Holy Ghost of God can't do that. Number one, deal with sin, personal sin, confess and forsake it. Number two, stay around people who love God. Number three, talk to the Lord all the time. He's your friend. Follow His commands. Take the Holy Spirit's advice. And number six, when you're hurt and you need help, lean on the Holy Spirit. He's your comforter. The Bible says He's the comforter. When you're hurt, lean on Him. The Bible says in John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I go away. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send Him unto you. Ephesians 3 and verse 16 says, And He would grant according to the rich of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. In the inner man. You can be close to God. But it is not a put on. And it's not a show. It's got to be real. Folks, just because you walk in those doors on Sunday does not mean you're close to God. Just because you say, well, I got saved in 19 so and so, it doesn't mean you're close to God. Deal with sin. Talk to God all the time. Let the Holy Spirit give you advice. Let Him comfort you when you hurt. Love God. Talk to Him. Obey Him. Do what He says to do. I loved obeying my parents because they were happy. They, I did the right thing. And when I didn't obey, it wasn't good. You know God knows when we obey Him. God knows it. Now, we're not all perfect, but we can't obey. We can't obey. Y'all remember Larry Shirley, the man that got killed in the wreck? Larry Shirley was such a blessing. Larry Shirley, y'all remember he'd always get here early. Y'all remember something about Larry Shirley? He always wore the most colorful shirts. I was always envious of Larry Shirley's shirts. You know, I had to wear them preacher outfits. And Larry Shirley would come in with red, green, blue, you know. And he always had this big smile. But something I'll never forget about Larry Shirley. The last year or two of his life, 
He'd walk in early to Sunday school, smile at me, have that pretty shirt on. Man, I don't know where he bought them shirts, man. They're awesome. And you know what? Every Sunday he walked in, he had that tithe envelope right there. You'd see that big old bright blue, green, orange shirt. He had that white tithe envelope, Brother Bozeman. He'd come in with that white tithe envelope right there. And I, what, I didn't know what it was first time. I said, what you got? He said, that's my tithe, preacher. I never asked him again. But he never missed having that tithe right there. You know what I knew about Larry Shirley when I preached his funeral? I'm going to tell you, one of the hardest days of my life, I got a phone call from some other man in our church. He said, preacher, preacher, I believe Larry Shirley just died in a wreck. You know what I knew about old Larry? I knew he loved the Lord. I knew that man loved God and he obeyed him. It was a hard funeral to preach. I had to identify Larry Shirley. It was him that died. He had a bad wreck. But I'm going to tell you, I didn't have any trouble preaching that man's funeral. He loved the Lord. He obeyed the Lord. Let's pray. Now, Lord, tonight, you help us. As Miss Usher comes, we have the invitation. Lord, it may be tonight that some people need to get closer to God than they are. And that's the, all I'm going to ask tonight, Lord. If you're here tonight and you're not sure you're saved, we want to help you be sure you're saved. If you're here tonight and you say, Preacher, I believe. Matter of fact, I know. I need to be closer to God. I need to be closer to God. You can be. You can be. Let's all stand. The invitation.